So this is the 2023 Framework 13 laptop, and it's not the Intel model that came out earlier this year. This is the AMD one, the one you should probably buy if you're considering this laptop, because it resolves a lot of issues that the Intel processor has. Like you get much lower fan noise. In fact, most of the time, you're not even gonna hear the fan. Way better battery life, and on top of all that, you just get better performance. Now there's two options when you buy this laptop. You can either choose the do-it-yourself version, which you have to put some components together, or you can buy it built already. Honestly, save a few bucks, get the do-it-yourself version. It's very easy to configure this yourself. The instructions are crystal clear, and it's actually kind of fun, you know? It's not gonna give you that full feeling of building an entire PC, but it's the closest you're gonna get with a laptop. Now I put this together in about eight minutes, literally. In the box, it comes with everything you need. It has the laptop, which is basically the cover off, the bezel off for the display, and you, when you open it up, you basically look at your motherboard and a display with no bezel around it. But immediately I put in the SSD, which was a one terabyte WD SSD, two sticks of RAM, which was 16 gigabytes. I got an extra Wi-Fi card, which I didn't need because there was one already installed. But after you do that, you just put the keyboard deck back on top of it. You screw in the captive screws on the bottom, and then you put the bezel around the display and it snaps on magnetically. It was, it was a breeze. But here's the thing, if you're expecting this to be as refined as a MacBook Air, it's not that. Like little things are not perfect. For example, the webcam at the top over here is not perfectly centered. Even like the fingerprint scanner is not directly in the middle. So yeah, you know, there's little imperfections, but look, you know, this is a device you can carry for a long time and constantly upgrade it over the years. And I think that's really cool. But it's a light laptop. Like this thing is only under three pounds. It's still an aluminum chassis. There's some premiumness to this. It reminds me of an older Acer chassis that I've seen in the past, but I like the idea of having the ability to switch out the ports. Like that is so cool, okay? Like for example, right now I'm rocking two Type-C ports and then on the other side I have a USB-A port and then of course a one terabyte SSD. Here's the thing, when you're putting the ports together, the two back ports, the ones closest to the back, those are USB 4 and they both support DisplayPort, okay? If you use the ports below it, like these ones over here, this only goes up to USB 3.2 and only the right one has USB 3.2 with DisplayPort. So keep that in mind when you're putting your components inside of here. But I like the idea of being able to carry extra expansion cards in your backpack. So let's say I go to an event, for example, I need an HDMI card. I can swap one of these Type-C ports out and place an HDMI card in it. Same idea with Ethernet. But look, it's very easy to open up. The display goes all the way flat like this, so 180 degrees. There's a little bit of wobble, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be considering this is a bezel that can be replaced. I'm not a big fan of the purple color, but thankfully there's a lot of other bezel colors you can choose from. The keyboard, super comfortable to type on. Like, I love the actuation and the click to this keyboard. It feels very, very good. Even the middle of the keyboard, like it's flexible, but it's not as soft as other products I've used. There's no RGB obviously, but you do have white backlighting. This fingerprint scanner also acts as your power button. And then you have a big glass touchpad directly in the center. But there is one thing that Framework is doing that no other manufacturer is, and they're cutting out the sticker guy. I don't think you understand how much money they're saving here. They're saving billions of dollars by not hiring a sticker guy to place stickers on this laptop, and I'm down with that. The display is 13 inches, and look, it's not the brightest display. Like, it only gets up to 300 nits of brightness, so it's kind of below average for me, but it's pixel dense enough that the text looks super crispy, and the color gamut and color accuracy is good enough that you can totally trust it for design work. Now the top you have two switches, one is to kill the webcam and the other one is to kill the microphone, but you do have a 1080p webcam. So this is what the 1080p camera looks like on the Framework laptop. Also, let me know how the microphone sounds. Is it good? Is it okay? Could it be better? Let me know. But the one thing they definitely need to fix are the speakers. They sound awful. Like probably the worst laptop speakers I've listened to this year. Now performance is good. It really depends on what SKU you go for. Like if you go for the 7040U, which is the more powerful processor option, you pair it with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte NVMe SSD, it's gonna retail for around $1,400 USD. The thing that really fluctuates the price is the choice of expansion cards. Some of them are like 12 bucks, 
Some of them are a little more, but if you go for something like the one terabyte SSD, that's gonna cost you an extra $160. The cool thing though, is that the performance of single core clock speeds is exactly where it should be. And multi-core clock speeds are even better than the MacBook Air 15 M2. If you do run this on battery, under performance mode, you will take a little bit of a hit. It's obviously going to run its fastest when it's plugged directly in the wall, something that the MacBook Air has a benefit over most laptops. But look, like if you're buying this to edit Photoshop photos or edit photos in Photoshop, or even do things like, you know, edit the odd video at 1080p, sometimes in 4K, it can handle it. And it actually gets the closest to the MacBook Air M2 in those regards. Now look, the fan noise on this is incredible. Like I had to push it a lot in order to hear the fans. In fact, the only way that I can get the fans to go on full blast was when I was running Prime 95. Like all the Photoshop tests I did, the Premiere Pro test I did, the fans would just barely get audible. It's a very quiet laptop. The beauty of it is that the core clock speeds actually run quite high considering it's only using one fan. And the heat management is fantastic. Like it hovers around 70 to 75 degrees Celsius when everything is being used. Now getting inside the framework laptop is super easy. I took out the expansion cards. You don't have to if you want to get in, but I did so you can see what they look like. There's five captive screws on the bottom. You don't take off the bottom lid. What you have to do is flip the laptop over, open up the display, and then you have your keyboard deck, which is magnetic and obviously attached to the screws when they're fully screwed in. Now don't yank it off, okay? There's a cable that's connected from the keyboard or trackpad rather to the motherboard. You wanna take this off first and then you can move it away. Now this is what the internals look like, like very easy to work with. This is the 61 watt hour battery, which I got insane battery life with over 10 hours of use. You have your slot here for your SSD. And of course you have your two slots over here for your RAM. Even the Wi-Fi card is completely swappable. Now, if you do want to upgrade this in the future, you can't just put in a new CPU. You have to remove the entire middle component, which is like the tiny motherboard, and then put in a new one with the updated CPU in order to continue to use this chassis. So look, this is what you're getting into when you buy this product. You're not getting the most refined laptop that has like perfect symmetry everywhere, and you have like the best keyboard and the best design. It's a good enough design. But the thing that makes it special from everything else out there is obviously the upgradability. Like being able to keep this for five, six years and then realize you just need a new CPU and being able to put a new one in is very handy, especially if your display is as good as this one. Like it's, it's a good display, a good enough display that it will last you years to come. If you're an enthusiast and you like the idea of being to constantly fiddle and upgrade your laptop, they did a good job with that. And especially now that you have an AMD processor, it solves the problems with better battery life. Obviously the performance is good enough. The only thing I don't like is obviously the speakers. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.